Okay, pen people, I'm back again today talking about fountain pens, of course. Today we're talking about Schaefer's, and in particular the Schaefer balance pens that were made in the 1930s and maybe the early 40s. I'm not sure the entire span of the you know the line, but they were made for a long time in a lot of different finishes and materials, and there's a lot of them out there. You can get them fairly inexpensively, but the reason for that is, is because most of them need repair. And as you can see, I've got a bunch here. All of these have been repaired. They're all working. Um, but there's a difference though, these pens over here, these three, are vac fillers and these are uh, lever fillers. So as you can see with this ebonized pearl version here, it's pretty large. It's in decent shape, but I had to make it that way. Um, I had to clean it out and you can see the section's nice and clear. You can see through it there and the lever works well because there's a new sack in it. These are very robust pens. They very rarely break when you try and fix them because they're just made out of thicker materials. You can unscrew the um, the sections from the bodies fairly easily most of the time. They do oftentimes have that Schaefer sealant on the threads, but they still come apart fairly easily because the materials are pretty thick and robust. That's not always the case with these vac fillers. Um, they can break fairly easily when you try and take them apart because the materials are thinner. This one, for example, this one, this is called a Schaefer Tuckaway in Carmine Red. This one's weird because the way this one is made is there's an inner um, part to it. There's an inner chamber inside of it that, that, that is the vac filler mechanism. And others, the whole body is the vac filler mechanism. Um, and that one does work, yes. I did, I did repair this one. And I repaired this one too, but it took a lot of doing. Um, you can see that it's kind of how it's pinched right there. And I should mention that my daughter's joining me today. So if it sounds like I'm having a conversation with somebody, I kind of am. Um, but it took, so the way you get these things apart is that you need to warm them up. And what that does is it softens the sealant that are, that's in the, underneath the threads here. And you can unscrew the section from the barrel. Um, once you've heated it up. But this one, these vac fillers are super thin right behind here because that's the chamber where the vacuum mechanism opens and um, it allows the ink to go in. If that doesn't make any sense, maybe we can look at another pen here that's a vac filler. This is a, uh, a Twisby vac filler and it's the same type of mechanism where you've got a, a central rod and then there's a seal at the end and as you operate it and push it down, the, it, it causes like a piston action along here and then as soon as it opens up into this more open chamber right here it'll it, it allows ink to get sucked up into it and um, so even on this pen the thinnest part of this this whole pen is right in this section right here the walls of this barrel are very thin right here and so if it's gonna break that might be the place where it will and that's the same case with these Schaefer's in fact uh, let's see let's grab one right here this is one that I purchased um, a while back from somebody who said that it was restored. Um, it wasn't, and in fact, it had been glued together. Um, this one's particularly fragile because this outer barrel is one piece, and then this, this section piece right here screws into it, and they're both very thin. And um, this one just snapped off inside of this one. Um, and it had been glued back together when I got it. I replaced the seals in it and then glued it back together myself and it's held together since then I just don't know it could break at any time so this is a pen I can never sell to anyone because it's you know I'm not as unscrupulous as the person who sold it to me anyway <clears throat> back fillers are more difficult to repair you can pick them up some people will try and sell them to you for a lot of money because they look pretty amazing like this one right here this is the triumph pen that was made during World War II it's interesting because it's got this very wide collar on it and they oftentimes have this conical um, triumph nib it's what Schaefer calls it triumph mm -hmm. um, but the section in here is very very thin and it's easy to break and when you try and take it apart so um, I I have another one of these somewhere yeah right here this one right here that needs repair and I'm terrified I'm I don't know if I'll be ever be able to open it right here to be able to replace the parts of it and I've seen, you can see that the shaft came right out. That's because the rest of the guts are in there. Um, for some reason, they came unscrewed. This back seal right here, you know, it would be really easy if this came out somehow. But 
they are they're glued in there. There's no way to get them out. Um, I've seen people where they've done it and they talk about doing it or whatever. I don't know how. Every single pen I've seen, they ha they are essentially bonded permanently to the barrel, and there's no way to get them out. And back in the day, Schaefer would just replace the barrel. And if you mess around with them for very long, you're going to end up like me with a whole box full of broken Schaefers because um, they just they're just just how it is. Um, but you'll end up also with a bunch of nice ones that work, and that's what these ones are. But that's not what we're talking about today. Not pens that work. We're talking about how to repair a Schaefer vac filler, and this is one that I got. Um, my daughter and I went to. Oh, it's a rod of ebonite. That's interesting. I don't know what it's doing there. Um, we went to the Pelican round, Pen Roundup, and uh, one one very nice person that was there had gotten a bunch of uh, of old pens and was handing them out, gave a bunch out to people. And um, I wasn't really looking to be given a pen, but she gave me this one, um, maybe because she thought I could fix it, but it's in pretty rough shape. You can see the nib is broken. And there's a sh the stub of the nib in there. The cap is interesting. It's got this wide um, lined band, and it's got YF initials on it. Don't know what you know who YF was, but uh, the cap is otherwise in is in decent shape, and the barrel is in fairly decent shape. Um, but it's going to need a new nib for sure, and it's going to need new packing inside. And here's the thing, and the, often you'll get them like this. This one, when I unscrewed this. It gave a lot of resistance, then it gave none at all, and then it came off. That's unusual. These are often very hard to get off. They've got this little nut right here that's jammed up against another nut that they're both made out of brass. Whoa! And if you can hold on to them. Got it back. It, it jumped out, out at me there. There's a little brass nut down inside there, you can see, and these two nuts lock together, um, but for some reason, this one was undone. I have a feeling maybe somebody was trying to work on this one in the past um, because something else happened. Um, normally, these are very, very difficult to get off these sections. Um, you can see this one's pretty translucent. You've got some light coming through there, um, which is nice, but this one, this one is unusual. I've never seen this before. I don't know if anybody else has. But you see that there's the, the striated green, the kind of seaweed looking stuff, and then there's a wide band of clear. See that? Yeah. And then an opaque, and then clear, and then opaque. Most of them, it's just a, a, it's a band of, of different colors, and you can see through them. I don't know if I've got another one here like that, but... Anyway, this one's just odd. I've never seen one quite like that. And then when I went to go take it apart... I mean, I wrenched on it, wrenched on it, wrenched on it, and then, um, but not hard enough to snap it, obviously, because it's not broken. Then you get something that's rubbery, like this uh, gripper material here. I usually like to wrap the barrel with it, and then take something like this, and then grab a hold of the section and give it a twist. And normally these resist every movement that you make, but this one came undone fairly easily. But listen, that crunchiness in there, that is the remains of the seal and that's what these are. These are old seals rubbing up against the bottom of the feed. And we'll slowly take it out. And you... It crunched a little bit more there, but then it stopped. Okay. And here it comes. So I don't know if it's because somebody tried to open this one in the past or not, but it came undone. There we go. And so now we have the barrel, and that's where most of the work is going to be done. But I'm going to have to knock the section out of this one. I mean, sorry, the feed out of this one so I can replace that nib. But you can see there's a tiny little spur right here of ebonite. The way these old um, Schaefer feeds are, and this isn't one of them. This, well, yeah, I guess it is. They're a two-piece feed. There's an outer piece and then an inner piece. And the outer piece, this one's weird because it's plastic. They're almost always made out of ebonite, and this one is. And you know what ebonite is? It's hard rubber. Yeah. Yeah, it's super vulcanized with lots of... Uh, of sulfur and anyway so it's the same shape and everything it's just that this one oddly is plastic on the outside but it has the ebonite inner piece so it's a two-piece feed and what you see sticking out of here is a little is a little bit of that second piece okay 
And the way it works is, is when the seal comes up from inside, you see how that, that's pointed on the end? Mm -hmm. Is it pops through that section to allow the ink to come in, and then as you screw the thing down, it pushes on this, and what it does is it tips the whole thing off to the side so the ink can flow past the seal and so that it allows better ink flow to the to the nib. And that's why they cut it at an angle like that so that when this comes down and pushes on it, it pushes it over to the side. You see that? Yeah. Okay. So what we, and so the, we need, we're going to need to knock this out. We'll use the nib block for that. And then we need to figure out how to get this out. And I haven't tried before yet, but I, Boy, it is just crusty in there. You see that? Mm -hmm. Just crustified. And it's it's metal. Oh, I got it to move. It's moving. Sort of. Oh, there it goes. And so down inside there is a piece that looks just like this. With the remains of a bad seal on it. So if I can get it to come out the rest of the way. Oh, it's not coming. There are some specialized tools to work on these pens. And I'm going to be pulling one of them out right now. This is a, I don't even know, it's, it's a skewer, right? But what it has on one end is it's a pointed end that unscrews. Very, very fine thread, very, very tiny little thing. And that little thing comes out. I bet what they did is they made these out of old Schaefer rods. And, yeah. And I'll show you what... what that is for later is when we reassemble the pen and then to help get this one out I'm going to thread it on here a little bit if, I, if it'll go on sorry pull it away from the camera so I can see it with my eyeballs there we go and then we'll just screw it on there a little bit and then gently push it oh my gosh this one does not want to go through it's fighting me what's happening is is up inside there let me see if I can get the camera to look at this the seal is in there and it's intact it's not broken and what it's doing is it's jamming it and not allowing it to come through ah, there we go and then as I pushed it through like that it shattered little chunks of it came off and so see the seal that little seal is sandwiched between these two pieces and this one is hard and it's crumbling away it's just a hard mess and so now I can unscrew this hopefully and take it out so what was hanging this piece up inside of there I thought it was this piece itself because what happens is see this there's two different kinds these two right here are the old kind where it's basically there's a, a steel wire through the middle that's threaded on each end and then this black piece this black right here is a plastic or ebonite coating that they put over it so that it won't rust because this will be in contact with the ink and the steel won't because the steel will rust but if you look closely on this one you probably can't see it too well on the camera but it's bulging it's not smooth it's rippled and what that means is, is that moisture has gotten inside of there and the steel has started to rust and pop out the, uh, the plastic liner. And so it's not going to be usable anymore because as you push this past a seal, it's going to allow air to pass around those ridged portions. And not only that, but it's just these are a failure point and, and they're going to fail no matter, you know, no matter how much you think or try eventually these things will go bad and I've seen these where they've been rusted clean through and they've actually come apart in two pieces or the plastic liners all popped off and there's just a rusty piece of wire sticking down inside there mm. so we'll need to take this apart and replace it and I have some replacement parts here and that's the nice thing about the interwebs is you can buy parts for just about anything out there and there are people who can sell you replacement rods now the later pens used stainless steel rods and there were a lot of them out there from uh, pens being repaired and uh, pens being junked. You know, after the body of the pen got destroyed or whatever, you could uh, pick up new rods. And, then we, and I have a couple of different sizes here. Um, I don't know if any of them are going to be exactly the right size for our pen here. I just, I hope so. But it doesn't look like that one's right. 
that was too short and that one is dead on so we have a replacement so we'll use this one for this pen and we'll get rid of these derelict ones and then we need to replace the seal but do I have a seal of the proper size is the question um, so anyway, what we're going to have to do at this point is, now that we have the rod that will work on here, we have to get this apart so that we can put a new seal on it. And we need to knock the uh, the the, the, sec the the feed out of this section. Um, so normally the way you do this is you need to heat this up because, again, this is a piece of ebonite. And ebonite, once it, when, when it gets heated up, um, does you know will come apart. Um, I have had an issue getting these ones apart in the past. They don't like to, um, but you can see this one. See that how it crunches? It's just no good anymore. Um, the guy who sold it to me said it was old repair stock from a, a pen repairman that um, you know, is no longer in business, and so um, it may take a little bit to get this thing apart. So let's just pause a moment. So off camera there, we warmed this up. Um, there's a couple of ways of doing that. Um, you can do it over a flame or you can do it with a heat gun. Um, I know that a lot of people in the business say you should be using heat guns or something like this so you could warm it up safely without a flame. I agree. Um, I oftentimes use a candle or something though because I like to live dangerously. I don't <laughs> recommend it necessarily. Anyway, once you've warmed it up, you can take that that little end off and I wouldn't mess with this one there's no reason to take that one off but then you got to figure out what size of a little seal thing you need and this is one that I made out of Buna rubber some time ago and I think this one's too small but we'll try it out real fast you want to be able to, you want to feel the um, the way it drags on the sides of the yeah, it's, you can hear it catching, but it's not catching on, on all sides, so it needs to be a larger one. And luckily, the person I bought those rods from, well, no, I got these from uh, Pen Tooling. He sells an assortment of these little gaskets. So let's pull these out, and there's some huge ones in here, which are, you know, not going to be for this pen, but I think it's one of these smaller ones here. You can see there's two different, two different sizes. So we'll go with one of these smaller ones on our little rod here. And that's the replacement seal for the inside of this one. And uh, this will be... And it's still got some of that shellac on there. So as I tighten it on there, it's giving me some resistance and which means it won't come undone while it's inside the pen and then I like to wet it a little bit and then stick it up in there oh man this one might be too too big no it might be too big I'll get it past the threads oh no it's not it just had to get work to pass those threads oh well we'll see <laughs> it might still be too big. We'll see. Um, but I have a sheet of Buna rubber, which is what these are made out of. And I can punch them out with some of my, uh, those leather punches that I have. I, I call them leather punches because that's what I use them for. But they're, I have them of all different sizes. Anyway, so this is the, but this is the really, really hard part about these pens is, is replacing the seal on the back here. Inside of here, there's a packing that's usually made out of a felt and rubber and stuff like that. I don't know what they used back in the day. And what they, the instructions that come with these repair kits, and that's what this is right here. These are the repair pieces. You re, we're we're going to replace that ancient, you know, material packing, um, fiber and rubber packing with this more advanced uh, O-ring that will last a, a nice long time. These O-rings are great, um, but there's no way to get it in there. So what they what you do is they tell you to come in here with a quarter inch drill and to drill through it. But the problem is the drills are usually very aggressive and you could easily pop right through. And you you know if you do it try and do it with a very light hand, I'm sure you can do it. But they also sell a reamer that you're supposed to use afterwards to clean out the hole. 
So after you drill it, you push this down inside there and it cleans out the hole and prepares it for the seating of the O-ring. But I found that if you take this reamer, and I like to wrap it with plastic so that the teeth along the edge here don't destroy the inside of the barrel, because the barrel has to have smoothness for that, that, that vacuum mechanism to work. I just like to slide it down in there, and then if you twist this, it will begin to cut away at the base there. And if you, and I actually sat here one time and went like this for hours and hours, and it felt like hours and hours, just like this. And it slowly began to cut it away. And you can see some of the material starting to come off there. And then using a flashlight to look down inside the barrel to see how it was doing, I could see that it was cutting a, a perfect sized hole. So I cheated and using my power drill here, you chuck it, you chuck the reamer into the drill and then hold it like this and put it up inside there and then just work it. And if you look, it's starting to take out the old material. And it's not doing, and see now it's getting some of that packing material. You see that brown there? Yeah. That's some of the packing material. And then I like to stop and look at it from time to time to make sure that I'm not going too far or too crazily. I can't see down in there very well. Yeah, it's still just taking the packing material out. And you'll kind of feel it. What it'll do is it'll kind of bottom out because what, what it is is inside of there, there's a cylinder like this that ha that's full of the packing material. And there's a cap on the bottom with a hole in it, and then a cap on the top with a hole in it, and the rod passes through this whole thing, okay? So what you're doing is you're taking that top cap off, opening up that hole where the packing was, and then we're gonna stick one of these rubber gaskets, um, O-rings down inside of there. But then what do you do? What keeps that O-ring from coming in and out? Well, this is, this white plastic here is particularly uh, sol soluble by with acetone. And so what you do is you put these two pieces up in there and you put a drop of acetone on it and these plastic washers dissolve a little bit and bond to the plastic around it, the old celluloid, and stay in there permanently. Oh, it works It works really well. And so what we're trying to do is to prepare the bottom of the barrel for that process. And I'm not putting much pressure at all, it's just enough to clean it out. So, pause it now. So we've made a little bit of a mess, got all of the packing out of there, and by scoping it, by looking down the hole there, we can see that the packing is all gone. And, um, I recommend cleaning it out, washing it out before you move on to the next stage. Um, and I got another tool specifically for this pro process, and it's this one right here, and it's made, it's designed for getting those packings up in there. Um, I keep calling it a packing, these O-rings, these new seal kits. And they're made specifically to work with the tool right here. And I think it's a little bit of overkill. I think, honestly, you could just stick them up in there with something else but it does make it easier. I will admit that. But what is hard is opening up tiny little Ziploc packages. <laughs> if you've got thick fingers like myself. Anyway, so one end will hold the O-ring and you put it up inside there. If you can see through the translucent part there, you can see this. Yeah, you can. That's good. You can see the, the, sh the, the tool going up in there and then it will seat that little o-ring that will come right back off on it <laughs> it always does that okay so now the o-ring is up in there and then the second part is, is you take this and you fit the little plastic washer on there and it fits on there perfectly and for this part I like to turn it upside down because that what that o-ring is not gonna fall out of there but this you can put up in there but you have to do it upside down otherwise it'll just fall out and you could feel when it pops into place. Okay. And because this tool doesn't really grip that washer terribly well, you can lift it right back out. And so now what we've got in there, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this very easily with a flashlight or anything, 
maybe yeah you can kind of see it there is down inside there is now an o-ring and a white plastic washer oh maybe that's the way to do it yeah you can see it right there there it is so there's that white washer and you can see the the black o-ring inside of the hole of the of the washer and that there's a little bit of black material around the outer edge of that white washer it looks like it's a, a gap but it's not that's actually the celluloid of the old pen um, and we cut it away and it fits perfectly down inside there the next step now is to put a drop of acetone on there so getting the acetone down in there is kind of an issue um, I thought that a syringe would do it you could just get a little bit of acetone and then put a little drop way down in there but it doesn't reach it doesn't go all the way in and I my aim isn't perfect enough that I can drop it on there perfectly so I was looking around to see what I had that had a left reach and this Twisby pen filler snorkel doohickey I mean obviously reaches all the way down in there but how do I get acetone into it and I didn't want to you know like suck some up with it one mouth or anything but then I have this little bulb pen filler thing that came with a pen I don't even know what pen and when I do worry that the acetone will melt the plastic but I don't need a lot I just need you know a drop that will you know maybe go halfway up this tube so um, let me get some a uh, little bit of acetone so you can see I've got a little bit of acetone in there and you should do this in a well ventilated place not like me and I can feel it when it touches the bottom there and I just squeeze it lightly and get it around the, the washer and I mean, just make sure it's nice and wet see I see moisture all around it so I think I got it so then this needs probably to sit overnight if you want that to cure properly um, and I do we put the, the rest of that acetone away and we can move on to the next piece which is working on the section okay so this is my nib block this is a, a nib repair tool um, you can you lay nibs on here and you you repair them. Um, I don't know how else to explain that, but um, when I got this from pen tooling, it was all slab sided. And what I did is I took it and put it up on my drill press and drilled holes through it so that I could use it as a knockout block. And so what you want to do is you want to find a hole where it would fit really tightly, but not so tight that it can't fall through. And that one's the perfect size. And then. Because it's got that two-piece feed up inside there, I have to be careful not to break it because there's this 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 very breakable ebonite piece coming through the rest of it, and so I'm going to have to not hit reach down inside with this piece and hit it on that little shelf and knock it through, and hopefully that works. I don't know. We're going to find this out real time whether or not it works, and then we want something a little bit heavy to knock it through with. Um, this isn't ideal. I usually I like to use something wood, um, you know, like a skewer or something like that, or like one of these wooden pegs that I have here that I use for other pen repairs. Because this one only has that one spot to knock to knock on. I'm just hoping I can get it to come through, and it's not budging, not budging at all. Boy, this thing's going to be a pain. Right there. Okay, so it's starting to give. Yeah, you can hear it mm -hmm. as I'm tapping it down. And what happens is, is that the section falls through. Whoa. And there's that broken piece of nib. And then there's the section. Sorry, there's the section and there's the feed. And I don't think we did much damage, if any, to it. <sighs> it did put a little bit of a ding. A little ding there on the side of the, the feed. 
you can see where it was notched almost like it like a screwdriver could fit into it and then it kind of fell down inside one of those notches and widened it just a hair I don't think that that's enough to cause any harm and, and our centerpiece is intact there's nothing wrong with that so this is a section that can I mean a, a, a feed that can go back in um, it's I, I, I it's usually a bad idea to take apart a vintage pen um, to knock the feed out because they perfectly fit and go back you know and they, they they've been together for 70 years or more um, on this pen, this pen's probably from the 1930s, so we're talking about a 90-year-old pen, and it's been in there for 90 years, and I just knocked it out. That is assuming, of course, that it hasn't been serviced before by somebody else. Um, and I should have marked it where the nib was so that it will go back in exactly the way it came out. But this one... It's got a pretty good indentation that shows where the nib used to be. And you probably won't be able to see it very easily on camera, but you can see there's some kind of marks inside the barrel there of the section. If you look inside there, you can see them in there. Or you can look if you want. But that will help me align it when I put the new one in. But I've got to find a nib that will fit that. So where do I find a nib? Well, I have collections of old nibs that I've been holding on to just for occasions like this. And let's see if I've got a Schaefer one in there. Now, this is a, a Schaefer that was marked number three. And I don't know that I have another Schaefer number three nib, but we'll see. This is a, another Schaefer nib, but it's obviously much larger. It won't fit. Um, it'll be too large for this pen. It's, yeah, it's much too large. It won't fit over that feed. Um, here is another. This is a Wall Eversharp. It's also very large. This one is a Japanese one that may or may not be gold. A warranted number eight. Oh, well, look at that. Is it number three? It's Schaefer number three. Perfect. Exactly perfect. It's exactly the same nib. How did I not know I had that? That's weird. Anyway, you can see there that we have a nib to replace the broken one, and it's exactly the same size. So it'll fit over that. Feed. Just like it was supposed to. Let's make sure that, yeah, and it may even mates up perfectly. So what you want is a, a nib that will fit up against, flush up against the feed so that there's no air gap between them at all. And this one fits perfectly. So we'll go in there and we'll try and line it up and then press it in. Okay, um, so with a little bit of pressure, it popped right in where it used to be. Um, it's nice having the exact same size nib so we're able to restore this pen completely. That's awesome. Anybody want a little chunk of broken nib? Looks like, oh, I've got another one right here. This is another one that snapped off the same way. And you, ha you may want to ask yourself, why is it this, this nib broke like that? My guess is that somebody tried to use this to flex, which is something that a lot of people think that all vintage pens do today. Schaefer's are not flex nibs. To find a Schaefer nib that actually flexes is like hen's teeth. They just, they're super, super rare. And if you look closely here, you can see that there's the spot where it says made in the USA. And that is stamped deeply into the nib. And that's the weak spot on this nib. So if you're pushing down on this to try and make it flex, it's going to give where the metal's the thinnest. And I think that that's why this one's sheared off right along that line that says made in USA. So you want to take a peek at that? I do. So the next step is to reassemble the pen with the proper pieces. Um, I want to wash this out first so that there's no debris in there and that the the vacuum mechanism will work perfectly without any you know dirt in there making it a problem. Okay, so we've cleaned it out. And you can see how much more how how much more clear that window section of that barrel is. And we'll dry it out a little bit with this Q-tip. And the acetone plastic has set up. It's just fine. And there's still a little debris in there. And I, you know, those of you who've been around pens, especially these old ones, I don't know. 
you can wash a pen for a month and you'll still get a little bit of residue from the ink. Anyway, so this one's pretty darn clean. We have a seal that is properly seated in there. And now we need to put the, um, the filler mechanism back in. Okay, so to make the packing work again, I like to use some of this heavy uh, marine grade silicone grease and squirt some up in there to get it around that o-ring to kind of fill it get it nice and greasy then this is where that little piece that this little oh I can't get it out of there my fingers are not precise enough this little piece that we took off of this tool comes in handy you screw it back on and it makes a nice smooth rod to go up through the packing and I like to put grease on it too so it won't harm anything as it goes through and it will align properly so you put it up through the pack the, that o-ring that's in there you can feel it go through and it's pretty smooth and then we unscrew it again and screw in our rod the one that's going to go in the pen and stay in there and then it's a little bit wider than the than the one that went through and I don't want it to catch and hurt anything so I'm going to put some grease on it it will help lube it up when it goes up inside there too but anyway now you pull it through and without a hitch or nary a hitch it goes through and then you unscrew the tool and you can I don't think that that seal is tight enough in there because I'm not hearing a pop no it's not tight enough so let's try again with a larger seal So now if it's done properly, you'll hear this. So it's popping and that's that popping action is what allows the ink to. So when it does that pop, it sucks ink up into it. So pretty cool. Um, I like to use a little bit of this silicone oil as well as the grease makes it really smooth. So we're getting there and um, again with this section here we'll need to th thread it back in and I like to put a little bit of the silicone grease on that too. Um, I know that Schaefer purists would want to put the Schaefer waxy sticky seal on there. Um, I don't have any of that and I like to be able to take my pens apart afterwards. So I use the silicone grease and it threads up in there nice and tight. It gives us a nice seal and you can't hear the popping anymore just a little bit but that's because it's sealed up now and now we need to put this piece back together which is the blind cap or the knob or whatever you want to call it so this threads in like this and then this threads in on top of it and you can lock it with a there's a tool made for this um, pen tooling has it I did a wonderful thing where I basically butchered a, a cheapy old um, crappy butter knife um, of uh, Dollar Tree vintage and using it I can tighten it up in there and so that's nice and secure so that when you turn this, it's turning the whole rod and it screws down nice and tight. Look at that. And we have now more than almost 40 minutes in, we have a restored pen. And I know that this was a long video, but I don't think anybody anywhere has actually gone through the process to show you how to repair one of these 
with the tools you're going to need and the mess it's going to make and all the other stuff. Um, I ended up having to punch out a few of these new um, seals with some of the Buna rubber because I couldn't find the exact right size. But once I did, it worked. And we have a restored and kind of cool with these great big wide windows here. Schaefer Balance with a vac filler. Anyway, thanks for hanging with me, Esther, and I hope we have a good one.